Hey guys, what's going on? This is Derek. In today's lesson, I'm gonna show you how you can use Adobe Capture on your phone to create some really amazing artwork and to gather assets for all of your graphic designs. It's a super cool tutorial. I actually pulled it from my Graphic Design Bootcamp Part 2 and I've got a special promo happening right now. So I've got three different free codes laced throughout this video where you can actually get my Bootcamp Part 1, Part 2, my web design with WordPress, logo design and freelancing, and Design Theory Blitz all for free. So there's three codes hidden in this video. So check them out. There's also links below for some also additional promos in case you missed that freebie. You can get a steep discount on this course if you like this video. It's gonna be a ton of fun. You're gonna learn everything you need to know to be able to use your phone in the field and create some amazing content. All right, let's go ahead and dive in. So as part of your subscription to the Adobe Creative Cloud, you get a handful of mobile apps that work with your smartphone as well. The one that I wanna show you right now is called Adobe Capture. And it's an amazing tool that you can use to capture all kinds of digital assets from fonts, patterns, brush styles, materials. A material would be like, uh, like maybe the color of this wood desk I have here, but wrapped around a 3D object so you can apply different materials to 3D objects, uh, vector tracing, and all kinds of cool stuff. So I wanna show you real quick how you could use that to not only speed up your workflow, but to add another level of creativity to all of your design projects. So what I'm gonna do first is go ahead and open up my phone and jump into the Adobe Capture app. Now, when you first log in, you're gonna to have to sign in with your Adobe ID. So use your email and your password. And then you'll land on a quick tutorial and just take a second to look at all of them because they might be different than uh, what I'm able to show you now because they'll update it all the time. But take a quick look at what's possible. So when we jump in here, we can create shapes, we can create type, colors, materials, patterns, brushes, all kinds of really amazing things. So what I wanna do real quick, just to show you the power of this tool and how it works with the Adobe library. So all of your assets sync between all of your devices and all of the programs. So I'm gonna jump into shapes real quick. And let's say I was working on uh, maybe a logo design for somebody or just wanted to add some extra textural elements to my designs. So on the bottom, I can use either the photo button where I can choose to load it from my camera roll, which is any photos on my device, or the Creative Cloud, which think of Creative Cloud, that is like, uh, as far as this option here, it's kind of like Dropbox. So you can sync, I think it's up to 20 gigs of assets between uh, all of your devices, basically the exact same kind of a service as Dropbox. You've got Lightroom, stock, so if you wanna buy Adobe stock images or files, so I can load files from my phone. Or again, the camera roll, I could take pictures from my phone. Or I can just click right here on the camera button and now I can see a vectorized version of my desk and all kinds of cool things. <clears throat> and now if I scrub the slider here, it adjusts how full that is. So that's uh, it's my printer and my uh, storage area for all my hard drives and cables and stuff. Here's my Beats headphones on the desk here. So I can scrub this and get different, um, let me see what it's doing here. Ton of fun, I'm just gonna take a picture real quick. And then, now what I can do is I can refine this a little bit further and it's got a lot of different options. So down here I can take the eraser tool and let's say I don't wanna include this extra area. I can just use my finger and erase away the extra vector data that I don't want to bring in and deal with later. Okay, so I can do that. <clears throat> I can uh, scrub right here to change my eraser size if I want to get into really small areas and clean things up more precisely. And then I can also crop this to different sizes. I can smooth things out. So smoothing on or smoothing off, click down here on the bottom to change those options. So I was thinking about it here. I'm gonna go and turn that back off. All right, and then when you're done, all you have to do is just hit save. So I'll click save on the top right. And now I can give this a name and I can tell it what library to save it to. So when you're working with your Creative Cloud libraries, you can create a whole bunch of different folders essentially to save all of your artwork. So the way I usually work is it's based on each client or each project. So depending on my client's name, I'll make a library just for them where I'll save all their color swatches, all their fonts, all of their graphic elements and any photos that I've purchased for the product. That way they're always in one spot. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit save real quick. All right, so I've got a new shape I can work with. I'm gonna jump in here to type. And right now I don't have any fonts, so what I'm gonna do is turn on my camera. So it sees my desk here, and I've got this uh, brochure 
book on my desk. I'm just going to hold it over here and it's going to automatically find the fonts. So it's found the fonts that I have available to work with and I can zoom in here or I can choose which one I want to work with. So I'm going to click on the word design and hit the little check box. And now what it's going to do is sync up with the Adobe type kit to find any fonts that are close. And now you might not find the exact match, but you'll find a bunch that are in the same font family, whether it's a serif or sans serif, and it'll get you close. So you can find something that'll work perfectly. So we can see the original image up above, and I can see that this first selection is pretty pretty close. You can see the letters on the on the original photo, they're, they're squished a little bit. They're a little narrower than this first design option. So maybe I'll scroll through a little bit and see if there's anything else that fits a little bit better. And you know what, that works good enough for my purpose right now. So what I'll do is I'll just go ahead and hit save. And it's, it automatically gives it the name character style one. I can rename that to be whatever I want it to be. But I'll hit save. <clears throat> it's gonna save it to my bootcamp part two library that I've created for this course. Now let's jump over to, to the uh, colors. So same kind of deal, let's see. What could we, here, we'll do, we'll do this. All right, so got my cool skis back here. I'm gonna zoom in a little bit and borrow from these things. And uh, just thinking about it. I'm gonna take a picture. There we go. And now it's got all of the swatches that it sampled from those skis back there. I can go through and I can edit all of these settings if I want to. I can change how the colors are sampled. As well as going back to the original image, I can actually drag these color swatches onto specific areas if I want to add a different color to the mix. So let's just focus on the skis right here because I don't want to mix in that wall color because it doesn't really work well together. There we go. All right, and I'll go ahead and I'll save those as an option. I'll hit save. Color theme one sounds good. And we'll hit save and that will save to uh, my bootcamp part two library. Now you'll notice down below published to color.adobe.com. So you can actually publish all these color themes too. If we jump on the website real quick, let me just jump in here. All right. So here's Adobe color, another really cool tool, tool that you can use to create color profiles and color swatches for your project. So if I have that turned on, when I save this, it'll actually publish this to my Adobe color profile as well on the web browser that then can be shared with other friends or other designers, or just to uh, let everybody else see what you're working on if you want. So I'm going to go ahead and hit save. And then let's jump over to materials. So there's a lot of other really cool apps and I'm gonna run out of time in this video to show you, but uh, when you get a chance, check out Adobe Dimension CC. If you come over here to your, um, uh, the Creative Cloud, the Adobe Creative Cloud, the app on your computer, and uh, come up here to apps and we'll scroll down uh, towards the bottom, it's a newer app called Dimension CC, and it's a 3D rendering application. It's super cool, and it's really easy to use, and they give you a really intuitive tutorial when you first log in. So what I can do is I can uh, open up my phone here again and go into materials, and I can take a picture. In this case, it was a picture of my desk, and it just says tap to freeze, so I'll go ahead and hit my picture button to freeze that as my material. And I can come through and I can change all kinds of settings, I can crop my image and I can preview what it's going to look like. So that material was created from my desk, which is amazing. So what I'm going to do is uh, actually down here on the bottom, you can change what kind of a 3D object it's rendering it to. If you want to see it as different options. Very cool. <laughs> there it is on a shopping bag. So when I'm all done with it and I've got it right where I want, I'll just hit save. And we'll save it to bootcamp part two. And now I'm gonna jump over to patterns. All right, so this one's really cool too. Patterns are a super easy way to add uh, more depth to your design. So let's say you have a flat backdrop or a background, you just put some simple text on front of it for an ad or something. By adding a little bit of a textural element behind it, whether it's a texture, in this case, a pattern, it can add a lot to your designs and go a long ways to uh, just add a, just push it a little bit further, just in subtle ways. Let me show you what I mean. So same deal, I'm gonna turn on my camera here and I'm pointing it at my desk. And so uh, 
you can see in the, the, in the middle, you see the image that it's sampling from. And as I move it, the pattern changes. So let me get, um, yeah, let's do this. All right, so now, there's my signature in the pattern. Really cool pattern that it's pulling up here. I could play with this all day. All right, just take the picture, Derek. There we go, so I've got a picture of my desktop right there, and that's what it's creating the pattern with. So I'll go ahead and save that pattern. All right, we'll save it to Bootcamp Part 2. And then last, we're gonna jump over into brushes. So same deal, what I'm gonna do is turn on my camera and we're just gonna take a picture of my keyboard because it's right here in front of me. So we'll click on that. And it uses that to define my brush. So now what I can do is drag my guides, drag the photo, crop it wherever I want. And you can see up above what it's doing to the brush and then I can even tap on here to kind of see what my brush is gonna look like, okay? Once I get that where I want it, I'll go ahead and jump over into styles and I can do some different default settings with my styles as well for my brush, whether it's coming into Illustrator or maybe I want to do like a scatter sketch brush in, in Photoshop. So I'll click on that guy right there. We'll jump into presets and I can change my size by default, my minimum size, the direction it goes by default, or I can set it to none so it scatters everywhere. I've got my spacing set, bump that scattering a little bit. We'll go on both axes so it turns. All right, that's pretty cool. Let's see what that looks like. So now I can do this and make a really cool brush out of a picture of my keyboard on my desk. That's amazing. I can come in here and I can refine this again by adjusting the contrast of the original photo so I can kind of clean things up if I want to. When it's all said and done, I'll hit save. This is brush one, save me to the boot camp, and I will hit save. All right, so that's Adobe Capture on your smart device. Now, here's where the fun really begins. So what we're gonna do is I'm going to jump into, let's just jump into Photoshop real quick. I should have had this open, but what we're gonna do is take a look at how this syncs to your library immediately, almost immediately. So I'm gonna create a new document. I'm gonna go pretty fast here because I don't want this tutorial to get really long, but what I want you to do is just see what's possible and play with it and check it out. So I'm gonna jump into the Bootcamp Part 2 library in Photoshop. So if you don't see that, I'm just gonna reset my settings real quick. I'm gonna come back up here to Essentials, and then I'm going to Reset Essentials in my workspace, so that way you kinda of see the same thing I have. I'm gonna pull up my Bootcamp Part 2 library, and you can see I've got my color themes going on here. So if I wanted to, I could quickly use those colors from my skis and fill the background with that nice red color. And then maybe let's jump into my brush and I'm gonna make a new layer, hit the letter B to get my brush tool. And in theory, let's see if this works how I want it to. I need to change the color. So let's just sample that gray color again for my skis. I've got my brush turned on, I'm in a new layer and now I'm just gonna paint over the top. And that's kind of cool. I'm gonna change the blend mode a little bit. I'm gonna change it to multiply and then maybe scrub that opacity down a little bit just so it's more subtle. That's pretty cool. And then where was that? Okay, there's my Beats headphones. I'm gonna drag that right in. This is that vector that uh, we captured. That's kinda cool. I'm just gonna scrub down the opacity a little bit. Maybe a little bit more. I don't know, we're just playing. So uh, this isn't supposed to be a professional design. This is to show you how you could use the tools to make something cool. So. If you were building some kind of cool background or something to build an ad over the top, this is a great way to do it. Now let's throw some text on here. So we'll grab my default character style, hit the letter T to get my type tool. And I'm gonna change the color to white. I'll click in here and we're gonna call this um, Adobe Capture. How's that? So now it's using that same font that we captured from this brochure book, which is awesome. So that is how you can quickly use Adobe Capture to sample, uh, oh, I was gonna say one more thing, materials. All right, so we're gonna jump into Adobe Dimension real quick, real quick tangent. I'm gonna create a new document. When you jump in here, it'll take you through how to use this. So I'm, I'm just gonna assume that you've gone through that tutorial when you check it out. But what I can do, by default, it'll show you these starter assets. So I can throw anything in here. We'll just throw this cube in here real quick. 
okay? And then up at the top where it says starter assets, I can twirl this down to show my libraries. And that's where those materials that I sampled will show up. So I can take this material from my desk and drop it right on that cube. And now it's gonna apply that material to this 3D object. Don't forget to check out those links down below in the description. Also, if you're new here, don't forget you can subscribe to my channel, tap the bell, and be first to know when I have new videos launching. And I might even be doing more of these coupon codes in the future. I think it's gonna be a ton of fun, and I can't wait to see you in the next video. Don't forget to check back every Wednesday, every Friday, I'll be dropping new tutorials just for you guys. Hit me up in the comments below with what you wanna see next.